Okuma bio mesie de ebu Okuma bio mesie de o ebu ma Uha me oku si ebu Olowo ma oku si o oba e wa e dami ho Where you walk by you tata Urio walk by ye gele gele O tanta no revia o guiso, revia o guiso e o rio guiamie. Yes, once again, brothers and sisters, this is J. Arrow Sydney for the Sydney Table Talk Show, the XTTS. Like I told you in my last video, I am going to be producing a series of videos in this very particular period because I have been able to put some materials together in the last six months for these videos. And I'm sure my public is going to enjoy my productions. Today I will be doing the brief history of the Ogiso Ogiamiya royal dynasty and Oraminya Eweka royal dynasty. As we've all known, Ogiso Arigo had two sons. The first one was Owodo and the second one was Evia. Owodo was installed as the next Ogisu after his father Arigo. But something happened in the kingdom and he was banished by the elders of the kingdom. And for some time, there were spaces in the kingdom, there were problems. And the elders came together, did their consultation using the best method known as at that time, arrived at the conclusion that the next king must be his younger brother, Evia. Therefore, Evian was now installed as the Ogiso who succeeded his brother Owodo. Ogiso Evian had three children. The first one was Uzama, and the second one was Erebo. The third one was Ude. While Uzama became the Ohenvia Niyekoba, who owns the territory that you now know as the GROA Amagba Ubo. Oko, all those territories were his territories. His father just gave him that territory. Why his second son, Erebo, was now installed as the next Ogiso. The last one among them, Oliha, who is Ode, who became the Oliha, was to install the Ogiso of Igudo Migudo. So from time immemorial, the Oliha of Utantan is the one responsible for the installation of any Ugyamie. This is just the brief history of the Ugiso Ugyamie royal dynasty. Now let's do a brief analysis of the Aramiya Eweka dynasty. Aramiya, as you all know, comes from Ife. First and foremost, who is Aramiya? As we all know from the Yoruba history, Oduduwa was the first Oni of Ife. And when Oduduwa reigned successfully and passed away, his son, Osanganga, became the second Oni of Ife. And when Osanganga passed away, his son, Ogun, became the third Oni of Ife. And when Ogun passed away, his son, Obalufono, became the fourth Oni of Ife. And when Obalufono passed away, Obalufo, his son, became the fifth Oni of Ife. And when Obalufo passed away, Arami Oraminya, the son of Obalufo, became the sixth Oni of Ife. So if we use what we all know in arithmetic as the least common factor, LCM, we can understand that Odudua and Aramiya did not live at the same time. So the saying that it was Odudua who sent Aramiya to Bini does not fit in at all. There is no historical empirical evidences to prove this. To cram this up, I would say, should I believe the history of the Bini, about Bini that they went to Ife and they met Odudua? Or should I believe the Yorubas who are saying that the Oni of Ife became, Aramiya became the Oni of Ife 
250 years, 300 years after the reign of Oduduwa, I would believe the Yorubas. Because all your Romania reign in Yoruba land, not in Benin. So this is the brief history. I think with this analysis, you can connect yourself. That the history that was told by the Yoruba of Benin is completely false. That history holds no water, has no meaning, is an attempt to brainwash the people to believe his nasty and nefarious activities. Okay? Now, the second is, we are going to be talking about the empire of the Benin, the Benin empire as we are told. The period, the, now we say, the pre Benin Empire period, they say, according to them, started in 1250, 1288 to 1440 AD. That was from the reign of Ereka I to Oba Waifuku. This, this is the pre Benin Empire period. In this period, they have agreed there was no empire, so the Oba of Benin was just a common king. Now, let us go and do the history of the Empire period, which was 1440 to 1897, and see if actually there was an empire. This was the period of Oba Ewari the first to Ovorame in 18, that is 1440 to 1897, during the reign of Ovorame. I haven't said this, I'm going to do a brief analysis of this empire period. Ewari reigned from 1440 to 1470. And as we all know in Benin history, as we all know in Benin history, Ewari died miserably. In fact, there is a saying in Benin, if you want to rob people of their properties, and you would go and align with Ewari. But unfortunately for him, at his old age, he was very sick. He rotted from head to toe. And he was always lamenting. And he was always saying, Meaning that if he had known that, look at him, let him go, let him do what he likes, was a cause, he would have asked these people to forgive him. This finally shows that neither Ewari actually started an empire. For a man who has started an empire to live a miserable life and begin to use this kind of statement, it takes you back to the days of Oromia. If Oromia had defeated the Ogiso Ugyamien at that time, the word Ile Ubino would never have been used. But you see, the, the word Ile Ubino in Yoruba language means the land of vexation and anger because he did not get his way through. He was sent back and beaten back by the Ugyamien, just like Ewari. Ewari did not open up any empire because his history is there for us to see. Now, we are, this is an empire. This is an empire. Now, from 1480 to 1504, we had Oba Osorwa. Osorwa was murdered in one of his raiding missions in Edo Central. What, are the, what is a raiding mission? A raiding mission is going to raid people for slavery and raid people for human sacrifices. But in one of these raidings, he was murdered. His head was cut off. This is an empire. This is the empire period that the king <clears throat> that the king said was cut off. This is an empire, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to listen carefully. Now we go to Obaohe. Obaohe reigned from 1656 to 1675. Obaohe was stoned to death by his followers for killing his deputy, his Iase. This is an empire. These are the kings who were, he was, they were reigning, they were ruling an empire. Ohen was murdered, stoned to death by his own people, and he was the king of an empire. We will now go to the story of Ewakwe the Great. Ewakwe the Great reigned from 1701 to 1712. As we all know, Ewakwe the Great went to his mother's village 
a village of about 25 to 30 kilometers from the heart of the present day Benin city when he had problems. The king of that village told a workman to pick up a cutlass, go to the farm, and farm to feed himself, or else he should get out of his village. This was an empire period, ladies and gentlemen. In an empire, an emperor, humiliated by a king, uh, an empire, an empire where an emperor was humiliated. This is an empire. And lastly, Uvorame. Uvorame took over the throne in 1888. And in 1897, Uvorame had problem with the British. He ordered his boys or his men to stop the British from getting to Benin because he was busy celebrating his Igwe festival. And in that festival, human beings were the instruments needed to celebrate the festival. It was a festival that often represent the act of intimidation of this emperor against his own people. But unfortunately, in six days, Ovarame was captured and taken to Calabar. We are still calling an empire. Well, now, let us go to the other one. There is this story that has been flying for several years, over the last 100 years, that the Obaseki, uh, Obahawaii, and the Lubusere, they gave orders for the murder of the British emissaries to Benin Kingdom. <clears throat> it is laughable. The Obo of Benin is a coward. Is a coward. A leader, a man of high integrity, cannot negate his actions in the face of defeat. If Oba of Benin actually had an empire before 1897, according to some of the books, he said Oba Adolo, his father, the father of Ovorame, had over 20,000 foot soldiers. All right? So, you have 20,000 foot soldiers and you were defeated by 1,200 soldiers in 1897. Again, if we apply the least common factor, we discover that the story is nothing but fabulous. Fabulous story. It's a fabu, according to, you know, it to be short. It's a fabu. Anyway, this shows again that there was no empire because there is no way a 20,000 soldier contingent would have been defeated in six days by 1,200 with dang guns. With dang guns in the 18th century. Gentlemen. We are saying that people should look at facts. We should not believe what we have been told. We should take what we have been told, try to fix it into what actually happened to see if there were facts. But unfortunately, when I look at the history provided by the Obers family, and I look at the one provided by the British, and look at the one provided by the Ugiamie, and look at the one provided by the Yorubas, I found out that the only story that does not resonate is that of the Oba of Benin. The second question would be, was Olobosere, Oba Hawaii, and Oba Seki, were they the military commanders of this empire? They were never the military commanders of this empire. So for the Oba of Benin and his people to continue to malign these people, hold them responsible for their failures or their shortcomings, is still an attempt to run away from his responsibilities. Let us assume that Oba Hawaii, uh, Olobo Sere, and Oba Seki were commanders. After the murder of these British emissaries, the Oba of Benin, knowing well that he did not give orders for this action, would have immediately prepared emissaries to meet with the British people to discuss this issue with them by apologizing. But the Oba of Benin did not make any move to meet with the British, to discuss with the British, to apologize to the British. He stayed put in his palace, claiming to be God. And then it took the British just 30 days to organize to and fro from their base, attack him and defeat him in seven days. So, ladies and gentlemen, this 
is the brief history of the Ogiso Ogiamie royal dynasty and the history of the Oraminya Eweka Obaubini royal dynasty. It is left for you to put these informations together and see whether the Oba was telling truth or telling lies. Like I have said, I believe that the Oba Rabini is a coward. He's a coward because he is a man who cannot stand in the front of his responsibilities. The Oba Rabini had always used process in his actions. So whenever there is a shot coming, the responsibility will not be blamed on those prices. But for how long can we buy such an absolute nasty ideas from him? We are not going to buy these ideas anymore. Therefore, we are telling you about Benin. Put yourself in where the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria places you. Otherwise, you're going to be fucked up. You're going to be dead with. Stop challenging the executive governor of the state. The governor of the state, his great-grandfather, Ebaseki, never, never betrayed Ovorame. Rather, Ovorame is a coward, a man who does not want to, or you people don't want to accept your responsibilities. Ovorame had no empire. Ovorame was busy killing people using people for human sacrifices you know look at the, the british history when they came behind this palace through Ugoto, they found over 1000 mutilated bodies in the forest head chopped off organs chopped off legs chopped off hands chopped off this was what they found in the forest but when they came through Olobo, they did not see a single soul in the bush they did not find anybody in the bush that was murdered in the bush or mutilated in the bush. These are the facts that shows that the territory that you are claiming today does not belong to you. And let me leave the last question for the Obama Benin and to my viewers. If the Obama Benin says that he was controlling the entire territory that he's trying to control today, we should ask him, how many dukes were the Obar of Benin having in Yekoriamu, Ipobaoka, Uhumunde, and Uredo before 1897? The number of dukes in those territories before 1897 of the Obar of Benin will prove if he actually had authority over those territories. On this note, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say again COVID is real. Stay safe and stay blessed. J.R. Sydney for the Sydney Table Talk Show. Remember this. Circumstances made me what I am. Was I born a violent man? Circumstances made me what I am. Everyone should know. You see? The stone that them built and refuse will always be the hard corner stone. The stone that them built and refuse, yeah, will always be the hard corner stones. Welcome again to the STTS. My God bless you all, my viewers. I wish you long life and prosperity. May the Almighty God continue to provide for your families love and respect.